So of course, uh, Archana is part of Bhakti and the basic qualification is Bhakti or Devotion. <laughs> if we don't have that, everything is zero. So that's the basic qualification. But for Archana, which is synonymous with Pancharatra, uh, you need Diksha. Because without the Diksha Mantras, you could not offer your Upachars or your items to the Supreme Lord. So uh, the basic qualification uh, uh, for Archana in its strict definition is that we have to have initiation uh, with the Pantratra Mantras. Uh, uh, other qualifications are not necessary. That is by Varna or Ashrama. All the Ashramas can do Archana. That is the Brahmachari, the Grihasta, the Vanaprastha, or the Sannyasa. There's no restriction. All the Varnas can worship the deity. That is the Sudra, the Vaisha, Kshatriya, the Brahmana, or a person who's not in the ashrams at all. He may be a Mlecha or a Chandala or whatever. But if he's a Vaishnava with Diksha, then he is qualified for Archana. So this is the uh, basic principle. This is a little bit in contrast to uh, some conceptions in India uh, and even uh, our own Sampradaya uh, as, uh, with Bhakti Siddhanta that was criticized. <laughs> they said, why you have non Brahmanas worshipping the deity? Okay. So his answer is the Vaishnava who is Diksha is higher than the Brahmana. So whatever the Brahmana can do, the Vaishnava can do, provided he is Diksha. Okay. So even if he is born as a Chandala or outcast or whatever, if he's qualified with faith in the Lord and the Guru judges and he is a Vaishnava and he gives him the Diksha Mantra, then he can worship the deity. So in other words, these external Varnashrama uh, restrictions do not apply to the Vaishnava uh, in worshiping the deity. If he's simply initiated, then he has that qualification to worship the deity. To make that a little practical, or uh, not so practical, but uh, obvious, <laughs> Bhakti Siddhanta did a very revolutionary thing. Uh, when he initiated and gave Krishna Mantra and Gaur Mantra to his uh, devotees, then he says, This devotee is a Vaishnava. Therefore, he's qualified for whatever a Brahmana can do. And therefore, he gave him the Upanayanam Samskara, the Vedic Samskara, with the thread and the Gayatri Mantra as well. So in this way, he was also a Brahmana. But we should not misunderstand and think the whole purpose of initiation is to become a Brahmana. No, the whole purpose of initiation is to become a Vaishnava. And Brahman is only a secondary byproduct to pacify the Smartas and others who think that we don't have any qualification to worship the deity if we're not born in a Brahman family. <laughs> so technically it is a Vaishnava initiation of which, uh, which surpasses the Brahman. So getting a Brahman is not becoming a Brahman, it's surpassing a Brahman actually. <laughs> and becoming qualified to do anything a Brahman, a Vaishya, a Sudra, or anybody can do, plus more. <laughs> so that's the real qualification to be a Vaishnava. And everything else is secondary to that. So of course, one can be a Vaishnava and a very high Vaishnava without Diksha also. That is Bhagavad Vidhi. No initiation, just Chani Hare Krishna, as Hari Das Thakur did. And one can do that. Okay. Uh, but for worshipping the deity according to Pancharatra standards, then this, this is the standard. The Diksha with the mantra, we're using the mantras to worship the deity. Okay? If we were to establish another process called Bhagavat Archana, <laughs> then we would chant Hare Krishna and be devotion and offer our items to the Lord chanting Hare Krishna, that's all. But we're following Pancharatra Gaviti, so therefore the process requires initiation. The assumption there is that anyone who is initiated has been judged as a proper Vaishnava with the proper faith, the proper knowledge, acceptance of the Supreme Lord, etc., sincerity, all these things. He's qualified as a Vaishnava. Huh? And therefore, he's qualified to worship the deity.